Hey Riley, how's it going? Um, I thought we'd do another one of our little um, specials on a particular um, mod just so that I can give you the basics about it before we go into our LP, LP and actually start to play. <coughs> now the mod name is Applied Energistics, okay? It is a, a mod that is just all about storage. So let's just quickly run through uh, the components of an ME system and how to build one and stuff like that. All right. Uh, first of all, uh, you'll need to find some certus quartz, some charged certus quartz. Uh, let's just quickly go and have a look at a couple of recipes. Let's grab some of this and a, uh, a pickaxe. Yeah, tools. We'll grab a pickaxe. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, the first thing you need to find is something called Certus Quartz. It occurs naturally in the world um, and comes in two varieties. This one, Certus Quartz, is, uh, is quite common. Mine it, you get a bit of Certus Quartz. The charged one, you mine it and you get charged Certus Quartz. Now that's kind of important because you're going to need um, at least some charged Certus Quartz to get going. Uh, let's, uh, oh my god, come here you. Give me a sword. Um, sword. Sword, 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 sword. Give me a crazy sword. So I can beat all these fuckers up. What the hell is that? Uh, don't know, don't care. Um, which one do I want? I want the sword of the Wyvern. Yeah, this will do us. Okay. Good. Now, with applied energistics. One of the things that you need to get started is you need some way of putting power into your applied energistic system. This is also called, the system itself is called an ME system, so get used to hearing that particular one. I don't want that. I want... Ah, oh, whatever. Yeah. So you're going to need... Uh, in order to make your energy acceptor and get started, you're going to need flux crystals. Flux crystals are made by dropping charged Certus Quartz, Nether Quartz and Redstone Dust into a puddle. It actually happens really, really quickly. So, let's, uh, let's go back to creative. And we'll grab some dirt and quickly make ourselves a puddle. Um, good. You can sod off. Seriously. Ah, oh, Magnum Torch. There we go. Let's just drop one of these on the ground and hopefully that stops us from having so many mob problems. I'm just going to kill a few of these things and be back with you. Okay, so we're back. Um, so yeah, all you do is you find a puddle and you drop in charged certers, redstone, nether quartz. And you see how fast that converted? Yeah, that's basically how fast it is. Okay, so that's what we need. We need a means of getting energy into our system, which is the energy acceptor. Uh, I'm just going to find a cell. Uh, dense energy, creative, here we go, creative. Good, so that's going to power our ME system, all right? The next thing we're going to need is some cable. Here we go. Cable uh, lets you get power to wherever you want. Let's, uh, let's just grab some of the covered flux cable. All right. Wonderful. That'll power things. Um, you've got a charger. This is another thing to make early. If you put a bit of, of Certus Quartz into, into this thing, 
Where are we? Where's some sodas? Here we go. Here's the sodas quartz. Stick it in. Contains sodas quartz. Give it a moment. And it's turned into charged sodas quartz. So that's at least how you can make the, the, uh, the charged sodas quartz. Another thing you're going to need early on is you are going to need an inscriber. Alright. Now an inscriber, let's see now. Let's grab a piece of silicon and uh, a press. Press, 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 here we go. Um, one of those, one of those, one of those, and one of these. These things you can only find in the middle of an Applied Energistics Meteor, okay? Uh, to find a Meteor, you're going to need one of these things, a, one of these things, a Meteorite Compass. Now, none have spawned in this particular world because it's a creative world, but what happens is that you you grab hold of one of these and it will point you in the direction of a meteor. Quite often they'll be buried underground, so if you find a chunk that's got a meteor in it, um, you know, and we'll do this in, in our LP uh, so that you can see it a bit better, but this will tell you where to find a meteor so that you can dig it up and get your presses. It usually takes two or three meteors in order to get all four, they're very important. So, let's see now, logic silicon. Silicon then goes in the top, and we put some silicon in here. It'll process and turn into printed silicon. Um, let's grab a piece of gold. Your Certus Quartz, Diamond, and some Redstone. Good. Alright. So we'll just process these. some mobs. I'm sure you understand. Three. Four. Good. So that's our silicon, right, out of the silicon press. A logic press requires gold and produces a printed logic circuit. A calculation press requires pure Certus Quartz. You make pure Certus Quartz by, say, sticking some normal Certus in a macerator until you get the dust. Add one dust and one sand and you'll get two seeds. The seeds, um, you know, you dump in some water and they'll grow. But I'll show you a bit more about those in a moment. Okay, good. So, you use the presses to get these parts, okay? Now, these parts go together with, um, let's see now, you want the printed part at the top, redstone in the middle, silicon on the bottom, and that produces a logic processor. Let's do the same with the others. Calculation processor. Let's just dump those because we don't need them. And an engineering processor. <coughs> now, these things are components in almost every. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, so you look at, at this. This requires, this crafting unit requires two calculation processors and a logic processor. Um, this 
we've got an engineering process around three of these. Each one of these is engineering, three of those, calculation, logic. So you can see, um, in order to, to get through your applied energistic stuff, you're going to go through a lot of these, okay? So when I've got a system like this, a system actually set up and automated, I actually have like seven of these things all set up for different tasks. Once again, you know, what's, it's a bit easier to see once you've actually seen it in the world. Uh, <clears throat> now, the most important thing about applied energistics is storage. Okay? So let's put an ME chest down here, and it's got power, but it's looking for something here. And what it's looking for is one of these storage cells. Now there are different size storage cells. As you can see, they all store 63, up to 63 different types of things, all right? The 64K one stores a lot more stuff, like 64 times what the, uh, the 1K does. I tend to only ever make 64s because I'd just rather be done with it, okay? So you take this and you put it in here, alright, like if I click on the side, I get that interface. If I now click on the top, this is like a chest, okay? Now, and I'm going to grab one of these and just stick it over here. Okay, so it works like a chest. I can put stuff in it. Wonderful. Um, you can see a little number there. All good. I've got four things stored in here. I go look at my disk and it says I've used up four of 63 types. Now if I take that out, I can no longer access the chest, alright? But if I go over to this chest, and I put my cell in, open it up, there's all the items that I had stored on the storage cell. So all the storage in this game is all about the storage cells and you know how they're um <coughs> excuse me. You know how they're they're used, how they're placed, what you've put on them, uh and so on. But having a chest, I mean that's that's a bit limiting in some ways. I mean, I can pump things into it, I can pump things out of it, I can use it normally, but that's a whole block for, you know, for like 63 items. There is a better way to store stuff, and that is using, where is it? Here we go, an ME drive. <clears throat> an ME drive looks like that. And it can hold. 10 storage cells, okay? So let's just grab, say, a few of these. There you go, and you can see we've got six storage cells. So this, this box here can hold, you know, up to 10 times as much as one of these storage chests. The only difficulty is actually accessing it, right? So this one, I can just walk up to it and use it, treat it like a normal chest. With the ME drive, we've got to access it slightly differently. And that is using something called a terminal. And there's a few different types of terminal. Um, ba -bum -bum, where are my terminals? Where are my terminals? Okay, here we go. <coughs> ME terminal. So if I put this on here, and I right click it, all of a sudden I can see all of the stuff that is stored in in my network. Now I'm going to take out this storage unit just so that I can make sure that what, what I dump in here goes onto those units. Or better yet, let's put this in here as well. Get rid of the chest. Now we go back to our terminal and we can see all of the bits and pieces that we've stored in our ME system, okay? <clears throat> and you can sort of automate that process as well. So let's uh, let's grab a chest, put it down, and grab a bit of our cable, 
and we're going to use something called an import bus. Now, import bus, import bus, import bus, here we go, export, import bus. So, a bit of cable, slap it on the back of the chest, and then, uh, let's, let's go back to page one and just grab a bunch of stuff. All good. Now we're just going to dump all of this in the chest, and you can see it's slowly disappearing. All right, and we can see it's all being added into our MA system. So that's essentially what an MA system is. It's basically a big, ever-expanding chest that you can, you know, store heaps and heaps of stuff in. All right. That's the first part of, oh, um, you don't always have to put stuff into your ME system, right? Like, let's just say I've got this deep storage unit, and I put some cobblestone in it. Uh, let's just grab a bunch of this. Okay, so... So we've got a bunch of cobblestone in our deep storage unit. You're going to learn about these not too distant future. Um, now, if we go back to our, our ME stuff, our applied energistics, there's another little interface. Well, let's access, access point, that's cute. There's another interface that we can use. Um, annihilation plane, yep, yeah, bugger off. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Import bus. Interface. Storage bus. Here we go. So if I've, you know, I've got a bit of cable next to it. So if I slap this storage bus onto here. Alright. That 320 cobblestone is now visible from within, within my system. And I can actually tell the, the system to say uh, da, da. yep good priority we'll make this a higher priority thing uh, yeah yeah so that it tries to store in here before it tries to store anywhere else um, so I think that that's all there is to storage. You've got chests, you've got drives, you've got storage buses for if you don't want to actually import the stuff into your MA system, you can just leave it in, in your storage unit or, or your chest or your barrel or whatever you've got. Um, this is pretty a good idea because there is a limit to how much one of these, these storage things can hold, all right? Um, and it's not that big. I think it's, you know, if you store only one type of thing on it, um, you can store, I think it's about half a million items, right? This thing stores two billion items. So many, many times, like you'd need 2,000 disks to, to store what this thing is capable of storing. So you'd use something like this for stuff that you've got so much of, you have no idea what to do with, right? All good. So that's part one of our ME system. You know, that's our, our first little explanation. Um, there is one thing to remember though, okay? There's one thing to keep in mind. This little system here, okay, is capable of supporting eight channels. Now, channels are a really important sort of an idea. Um, each thing, you can see where it says device online, everything you've got that can store, you know, that, that does anything with actual items, um, requires a, a channel. And like I said, this system is capable of, of only having eight channels, all right? This thin cable can only carry eight, and a system without a, uh, a controller is only capable of doing eight maximum. So I've got 
this is in use, this is in use, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so let's just take care of those two. And we should, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need another one off. Okay, good. So I got rid of the extra stuff and all of a sudden everything came online again. I got an achievement. There were fireworks. <clears throat> yeah, and this network, simple as it is, has reached its limit. This one here is not using a channel. It's only using the cable to supply power. Same with this one. It's only using the cable to supply power. Um, it's not inputting or outputting items into the network. That's, that's what defines it. This import bus needs a channel because it's importing items from the chest. Each of these needs a channel because it's storing and retrieving items. Same here with the storage bus and then the terminals also require a channel. How do we get more channels, I hear you ask? Well, that's really simple. That is through the use of something called an ME controller. All right. Let's, uh, let's just stick this down here. Now, an ME controller is a bit like a, um, a computer, th yeah, the central part of a computer. So if I put that here, you can see it's lit up. So now, if I put a bunch more terminals on here, they're all online, okay? Uh, so we've got eight terminals here. We've got a few other bits and pieces over here. And we're easily coping because each side of one of these controllers can handle 32 channels, all right? Um, <coughs> this cable, I said, can only ha handle eight. There is a bigger, you know, bigger cables available, and that is, let's go down, this dense cable. So I'll grab some of this, and I'll just take this out. And you can see how much different it is, all right? Fantastic. These are all online. All good. So that can handle 32, all right? Um, doing your network, you know, your full network, takes a bit of planning in terms of, you know, sort of setting things up and, you know, making sure you don't run out of channels and, and all the rest of it. Um, now your controller, see at the moment we've got one here. You can have a bigger controller than that. Your controller can be as big as uh, a cube that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it can be a straight line. <laughs> yeah, and then we can go up, you know, sort of a number of places so that we have a seven by seven by seven cube. And you can tell it's all okay if it all, you know, sort of lights up and, and behaves itself. So let's, uh, let's just quickly make one here. Put one in the middle, and you can see that this center one hasn't lit up. All right, that's because this middle one here is just running from there to there. It's, it's not like on that one. Yeah, so this one, if I attach cables to it, doesn't do a thing. And if you look at the little tooltip up here, it says that it's getting no power. So let's get rid of that. Uh, and if we put one there, and there, and there, and there, and there, that is still not getting power. These ones are. Uh, let's, uh... Let's build this up a little bit. La 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 la. Once again, not getting power. So you can see there's a little bit of work involved in figuring out how to create your ME system so that it is going to 
you know, figuring out your um, your controller so that everything's got power. Yeah. Um, best thing you can do, jump into a creative world. Just sit there and muck around with one for a bit. And you can have a bit of fun with this. You can be quite creative and, you know, a bit artistic and all that kind of stuff. And each one of these, each side, can handle 32 channels. Now, if I grab, say, uh, let's grab some fat cables. I'll get rid of the terminal. Get rid of the bus. Get rid of the bus. Hang on to that and we'll grab some blue, some brown, some green. All right. Um, now, each one of these can handle 32 channels. And it says up the top, zero of 32 channels used. Um, if I put this, let's, uh, let's grab a, uh, a screen. Stick it on here. Oops. Yeah, it doesn't want to do that. Let's, uh... Yeah, that's better. It, it didn't want to connect directly to the, uh, the dense cable. Some things don't. Some things want to connect to a light cable only. So, you're going to have to muck around and see which ones do and which ones don't. Now, you can see we're using one of 32 channels, alright? But if I go over here and I add another piece here... You know, it's, yeah, it's a bit messy, you know, in terms of trying to control your, um, your channels and stuff. Best thing to do, if you've got cables next to each other, use a different coloured cable. Because different coloured cables do not connect to each other, right? Not at all. Okay, so you've got 16 different coloured cables, and then there's plus one which is this base one called Flux, all right? Flux connects to everything. Flux cables will happily join up everything and make a mess of the whole place. So, you know, be careful where you're using Flux cables. Once you get to the point of making a large-scale um, ME system, you'll probably, you know, use almost exclusively coloured cables. Um, yeah, so, jump into a creative world and just play around with making an ME controller, make it look the way that you want, have a bit of fun, make it all nice and pretty, and so on. Um, do, 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 do. I think that's about all I wanted to cover in this particular special. Um, you know, I just wanted to cover through the absolute basics of, you know, getting an ME system up and running. The power, the controller, drives and storage units, storage cells, and so on. And using an inscriber in order to make your parts. Now that we've done this, we're going to head back into our, our LP world, and it's time to start building our, our ME system in our LP. Okay, I will catch you later on, man. Talk to you soon.